Hello, my name is Eric Christensen. I'm a physics professor at South Florida Community College. For the past, for the past two and a half years, or the past five semesters, I've been using an open source physics textbook in my general physics with calculus class, both term, semesters uh, one and two. Uh, once I took the plunge, I've never looked back. I find it uh, extremely adaptable and it suits my teaching style perfectly. So I want to talk to you just a little bit, tell you what I've done to see if that might inspire you or give you some ideas how you might want to do it. The first thing I did was once I, I, I went to a NSF workshop and I, and I found out about a textbook that sounded really inter exciting because it was based on active learning. Well, I took it back and I said, I'll just prototype this. So I took a, a small module of it, you know, which covered maybe two and a half weeks and I tried it out on, on my current class and I just said instead of your standard textbook I'm going to give you this new material and let's go through it and see at the end uh, I'm going to ask you how you liked it. Well I got rave reviews from the students. They felt more engaged, uh, had a lot, did a lot of peer, peer learning and so forth. It was more the way I like to teach rather than uh, strictly uh, lecture in front of the students. So based on the very positive results I said okay well next fall I'm going to adopt the whole book, jump in both feet and see what happens. And like I said, I never look back. So um, the, some of the rationale why I did, chose to do this was the book I was using was a standard physics textbook that uh, has been around, it's in the 11th edition, it's been around for a long time. But it was not designed from the ground up for active learning, and much more for straightforward uh, lecturing, which, which I don't like to do. Um, it also, the problems uh, did not integrate calculus very much, and I was disappointed in, in, in that aspect. It wasn't mathematically rigorous enough. It was very rigid in that I had to sort of follow the topics in the way the book had it. I didn't have any choice in shifting around. It was, it was quite complicated to do that. And most of all, most significantly, was students were starting to complain about the cost, pushing, you know, $150, $175 for the book, several of my students came and asked me if, if I if they could if I had an older version or something that, that I could loan them for the course because the cost was just too high. So um, I said I'm going to I'm going to try to solve this problem or see what I can do. And um, so the book that I adopted, although you might not be teaching physics, and that's perfectly fine. But mine was Spiral Physics. It was developed through an NSF grant for over a dozen years by Paul Delisandris out of Monroe, Monroe Community College in, in New York, uh, which probably doesn't mean much and doesn't really apply a whole lot. But um, it was designed from the ground up for active learning. It has different uh, ranking tasks and the problem sets, and a lot, lot of it is, is active working in class and peer learning, uh, which to me is a very effective way to have students engage them in, in the classroom. So what I like about the book, which would be probably you could equate to almost any um, open source textbook that you could find, is that you can very easily add, depending on the copyright of course, um, you can add or delete or change things. So what I do is when students are really struggling on some topic, well it tells me I need to go go edit the book and so I'll, I'll add, it, add some more examples or descriptive or find or I might even do a small video like this but I'll, I'll add some other supplemental based on where they seem to be having troubles and that has worked well for me and it, so it's, gra it's gradually evolving but my changes are smaller and smaller from when I first started. Um, I like it that I can integrate my labs very easily and I can structure the, the, the material in the, in, the, in the textbook so that when we get to the lab they know what's going on. And it's very affordable. Now my book ends up being about 700 pages because that's because I include the syllabus. I put all of my labs, any supplemental handouts that I plan to use in, during the term, which I use year after year. Well, I stick them in there. Instead of having to Xerox them, I let the students pay for them at the beginning. And so my bookstore has, is, the, is part of a larger, it has a print shop that they can use. And so they just send it out to the print shop and they shrink wrap a uh, a bundle of, and it's about the size of a phone book, it's about 700 pages is, is the book for, for each semester. But a lot of it is problems, and so the students, it's, it's, it's their notes, it's their homework, and I'll, I'll often pull a problem or two out and make that the quiz. So it's, it's kind of like all together, they've purchased the bulk of all paper products that I'm going to even have to supply to them. 
Well, the bookstore charges the students $13 for this book. So you, you do the math, but $175 versus $13, you know, that, that's astronomical savings. Uh, students like it, and uh, obviously for the economic side. And then when the book is separated like that, they can only bring in, they don't have to carry a big thick book, they just bring in chapter one or in the lab that we're going to do for that week. So there are a lot of advantages I see from, from going this route. There are no fancy pictures in my book, although some of the open source books I've looked at are, you know, photo ready for um, quite professionally done. Mine is, is not quite that far, but it, for my purposes, it works perfectly. Now, you might ask, what are the challenges of, of, of integrating an open source textbook? Well, there are some, obviously. And most importantly, is you're not going to get all of the supplemental information and ciliaries that you might be used to. Of course, that depends. Some of these open source books come with test banks and um, PowerPoints. And you just have to look around to find what would work for you. For me, it was not a really a big deal. I modified some that I was using before and then used some of the new material. And it evolved as it went, so it did take some more effort, just as you were teaching any course where you change the textbook. Um, again, for the quizzes, I kind of just use problems right from the book. In the exams, well, I pull from different places, but you know, you sort of have your standard test that you like to use. So uh, I didn't find that a limitation at all, although it was some extra work, but you know, it was fun because I was developed creating things on my own there, so I didn't have a trouble with that. Um, let me see, I made some little notes down here. I think the biggest thing that I would say is highly adaptable. You can uh, add or subtract material. You could take it from multiple sources and put it in there. You can rearrange things very easily and set it up just the way you like to teach. Um, now this is, I'm going to just close with this. This is probably anecdotal. But in the last five years, I've had five students that have gone on to be physics majors in the university, which, which I'm very proud of. Not many students, you know, like physics or go into physics, unfortunately. But uh, I would say four of those five have done in the last two years since I've adopted this book. Not saying that this was the cause of it, but it certainly didn't help that I think they saw a different side of, of uh, physics and how physics can be fun. So I think it's a way you can engage your students and, and make your course become more personal, obviously, and more alive to your students. I wish you luck, and I would be glad to, to talk to anyone about open source textbooks uh, if you have a question. Thank you.